There you go. Tell me if you can see it from there. All right, we are officially live. Okay, good. Thank goodness. Well, first, I'd like to just say right off the bat, Caleb, thank you for for joining us. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, thanks for having me on. <laughs> well, listen, it's we're the ones benefiting from it more than you are. <laughs> so. Yeah, this is a free class that Carl and I set up for uh, some uh, two-on-one uh, consultation yeah. here. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't need his training anymore. Now I have become the master. Become oh, the master. Yeah. As if, as if. Uh, so How Josh, those uh, night lords coming along, Carol? Yeah. Finish up. <laughs> yeah. So let's talk first about uh, what what are you painting uh, or working on right now. Uh, during this yeah absolutely i'll uh i'll crowd my camera here so i've got four spartan four massive spartan assault tanks here aka the tiny little legion superioris ones you may have seen these in box form yesterday and i've been very busy in the few minutes that i could spare to get these uh built and painted to at least the candy red set so now i'm doing all of the uh the details here all the detail work all the metallics, blacks, whites, details, etc. Yeah. Trying to get these ready for Adepticon in just a couple weeks. So got a little yeah. uh, time crunch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll bet you I'll bet you are uh, doing a time crunch. I am working on the uh I can't remember I can never remember what this guy's named. He's the Vox Mackinor, Vox something. He's the chaos guy riding the scorpion kind of thing. And it feels like I'm working on edging for days trim for days <laughs> um especially with this model uh you know i gotta tell you i i'm not a huge fan of um of the the demon engines like the the stuff that goes organic to to mechanical um kind of becomes it's it, i think it's a little frustrating for me it the transition area specifically or just yeah the they fact can that be the model has multiple things going on yes and yes um <laughs> although i will say the the newer um versions of these things uh the transitions are a little more defined and so that makes it a bit easier uh sure, as you yeah. go through trying to decide what to do um so uh i have several topics to talk about uh, but we have Caleb on here and Caleb, uh, you are, uh, it's for any listener of the independent characters who's been around any amount of time, uh, they know that you are one half of CK studios. Um, it's you and Kat who, uh, are, you've done numerous types of classes from airbrush 101 to 102 to, oh, yeah to uh here's how we paint carl's titan to <laughs> to all those things all the above um but you're now working for army painter and yeah. we've had we've had adam on the show um but uh you, you've made it you've made a move over there um and you and i and josh were talking a little bit about the um uh, <laughs> What's the high end line of paints again that we were saying? Fanatics. The fanatic line of paints yeah. that Josh yeah. has been playing with. Yeah. Um, and the the thing I kept to myself as you were talking about it was, um, it kind of it's kind of easy to advocate for something when you really like it. <laughs> you know? Like I'd be a terrible salesperson, I feel, but when I really like something, like I. I feel like i'm able to convince people yeah this is something that's cool you know um so what is it about army painter that enticed you to to go there and and work for them um i mean i don't know if it was enticed i guess i was enticed i shouldn't say that now um you know cat went to I mean, work for cat strong army painter. <laughs> yeah I keep hitting my desk and my camera's connected, so it makes everything shake. Um, but yeah, Kat went over to Army Painter last year. Yeah. Um, she um, 
she kind of got done working with a uh, hard-earned steam back and needed another job to transition into the games workshop kind of gig that we were doing i don't really call it a job because we really weren't making much doing it yeah um it just wasn't going to to be able to pay the bills for her and she needed to transition a little bit and that's how the army painter job came up i think you guys talked about it when you guys had cat and uh adam on or maybe not i don't know anyway um yeah so cat went over last year um and i determined that i wanted to stick out and finish up the full year with gw i just built a new class system with a bunch of uh classes that we developed and stuff like that so i just wanted to finish out the year doing that and i really had no intention of going to work with anybody else we talked about a little bit offline but um last year man i just reached this burnout point where uh the hobby was just uh, I, I really noticed it at Vegas last year. I went to LVO uh-huh. and um, we got done with LVO and we were driving back, me and Kat. And Kat said, you know, we always talk about events afterwards and, sure. you know, what was good, what was bad, what we could adjust, what we could fix, what we could make better. We're always trying to build our programs better and better. And um, uh, on the way back, she's like, so how, what did you think? How was, how was the LVO? And I was like, yeah, it was is all right and she says well did you have fun and i was like no not not really (laughs) and then she's like and then she rolled right into like oh what was wrong what happened what can we fix blah 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 and i was like nothing it it was a good show it was just another show Yeah, yeah doing so many events doing all of these opens the the uh the uh the feed starts up again Sorry, Caleb, we'll get right back to you. Yeah, the show. Oh, no excellent, excellent connection is what it says, but let's see. It might be a Riverside <laughs> issue. Maybe it's because we okay. have so many cameras piping in. <laughs> All right, I got video again. She's we're good. back. Okay. We're, we're back. Did you hear, did you the hear cameras recording? All, the cameras have all shifted spots where they were on the screen, though. Okay, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's yep. all right. Everybody else says they're back, too. Oh, good. Okay, Thanks. cool. We're back. Cool. Uh, I think we have six or seven. Oh, nice. Okay. Well, welcome, guys. If you have any questions, like feel free to interrupt us at any time uh, or let us know also in chat if you're hobbying right now. I'm very interested in knowing what you are hobbying on because I've got quite a quite a bunch of stuff to talk about here. And Shell, make sure you interrupt us if we're going because I will. You know me. I'm going <laughs> to start yakking pretty soon. Got to keep talking. That's right. Okay. So Caleb, where we left off was you started playing around a bit with the new uh, the new line. Yeah, and, and, and yeah, I mean, once I used the the fanatic paints, there was no really reservation for um, working, kind of supporting any of it because one of the things I've always pride been been proud of prided ourselves on with ck studios is um we really tried to stay as realistic as possible i don't yeah. know if that's a if that's the term no i i think cause, uh, I, I was going to ask you a question like what if you had tried the fanatic line and you were like this is terrible <sighs> would you have just said yeah i'm, I'm afraid i can't get involved or <laughs> what would you have done push in that it, case? yeah um if they would if they wanted me to continue pushing their air paints i totally would have. <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> but but if the fanatic paint line wasn't good um i have a really hard time with that yeah, I, no, we I ran into fair. that we ran into that back when we were working with badger with the minotaur air yeah um you know when you're teaching those classes and all the students are like you know what should i buy you're just so hesitant to tell people to to buy a product that you know is subpar and and um i don't know i war with that within myself you know i don't want to i've got a lot of friends in the industry a lot of people that have really great intentions some of their products aren't the best products yeah and you're just like yeah man i i i I would love to help support you but yeah you know that's one thing uh, from the independent characters standpoint like 
I've never accepted an advertiser or a or a a a um I've never recommended something because somebody wrote it or what have you that I didn't believe in. Like if it if it were not solid, yeah. I would just kind of steer away from it and be like, well, you know, let's talk about this other thing. Yeah. When the product sells itself because it's doing what it needs to well and you are just a happy user of it and can pass it along to everybody else who's going to enjoy it. It's that's that's it's, exactly right. It, that's it sells kind itself, of right? So, yeah, yeah, it's it's the, the natural <laughs> the natural approach. Yeah, and that's that's the way we love it. That's that's the way we like um the products that we're supporting that come out. I've I've always had this really it was such a great opportunity. Um this might be a, a bit of a story, but um, when we shifted over from Badger to Harder and Steinbeck, yeah, um, yeah, 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 a few classes in, we got kind of called out in the middle of class. One of the students was like, "Hey, you know, you talked about Badger. It's not not that we've ever said that Badger are bad brushes, and you know, even today I'll tell you that like the 105 is like the AK47 of airbrushes." Yeah. Um, but we were really talking a lot about harder and steam back and everybody knows about the, the V2 needle and all that stuff. I've probably talked about that for a bazillion times. Um, but it was, it was that good of a product. And the, one of the students said, well, you know, it kind of seems like you sold out. And I just said, well, I'll tell you what, I took his brush away from him. And I said, you're going to paint with this brush for the rest of this class for the next day and a half paint with this brush. I'll teach you to call and me. uh yeah i just wanted to show you know what i mean yeah, yeah, yeah. no 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 and long long story work. short the oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> the 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 product sp- spoke for itself it sold itself yeah. well, by the I, end of I the think, class the dude was like oh i want to buy it but i think it's also possible for for one products to improve meaning hey i like product x but then product y comes along from a different company you're like you know what product y seems to be a bit better than product x it's it i think it it's i think it's healthy that you can change opinions right i mean you know i think that's that's totally real realistic but also you know um i don't know what else i was gonna say also <laughs> <laughs> i had something there but it slipped my mind cool story was, bro as i was screwing up my gold trim here damn it I did. no no i didn't okay whew. that that is uh <laughs> For for an educator or uh, an influencer or something like that, that is kind of a tough position to be in when, yes, products change, products develop. Um, maybe your techniques develop and you find that another product works better. Oh, that's a And one. there's a lot of people out there that will naysay that. Oh, you sold out. Oh, you, you're you doing that. You're just doing it because you're, you're getting paid or whatever. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, because that happens a lot in this in this in all industries i shouldn't just say this industry it, but, but we're most it, familiar with this industry right we're most familiar with this industry but it happens a lot that you kind of got to wade you kind of got to wade through the bull crap a little bit yeah, yeah, and yeah. find those and what will happen is is the the people that are that are i don't want to say legitimate but the people that are kind of more upfront they usually you'll learn after a little bit you'll know exactly who they are if yeah. if um i i'm trying to think of a particular like <laughs> big name artist or something like that but if they tell you yeah this product's good you know it's good it's carl, not just uh if carl tuttle tells you this <laughs> four yeah you know it's good west coast and, and you you know and you've been good about that by not bad mouthing bad products yeah. Just not necessarily really discussing them too much. You're just like, well, the worst. I'm not I, I, the worst is, you know, there's a particular product out there, and Caleb, you know what it is, but there's a particular product out there that I think is a good product, but I can't stand the company. <laughs> and I'm like, I will not <laughs> promote this company at all. They are not where I want to be. But anyway, um, okay. Oh, yeah. So, so you, you answer that question. Um, speaking of airbrushes, I, this is kind of. It's, it's on my list of topics to talk about here, but um, I just started having a problem. Shell was actually there when I started having a problem. Speaking of Badger and then Harder and Steenbeck, um, 
I was painting with my Badger Chrome. Um, and that's the one, it's also a real, I think it's kind of a workhorse um, product. Like, I think it's a really good airbrush for, for what I've been doing. And it was getting a little gummed up. You know, I mean, I, I do like the quick, clean, you know, blow everything out, pull the needle out a little bit, clear, clear it a little bit, clean it, switch to the next color, you know, blah, blah, blah. I'm doing all that. And then it, it really becomes gummed up. And I'm like, okay, it's time to really clean this thing. I took it apart. I cleaned it. Um, and now no air will come through it. Oh, interesting. Yeah, no air will come through. Like, you hear it blowing air, but no air comes through the front. And I'm like, uh-oh. So I oh, yeah. messed around with it a little bit, and then I was like, you know what? I'll just switch over to this harder and steam back right here for now. And I'll ask Caleb later next time he comes over to help me look at it. So I don't know what I've done to it, but. Sounds like you got a clog in between the. Uh, I, I think the, I the trigger down and... by the trigger. Yeah. 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 And I, I, I've. I can't figure out how to get to that to clean it. So, what I will not do is let it soak in simple green for a week. <laughs> right, we learned our lesson on that. I learned that. my lesson the hard way. Interesting enough, simple green will strip chrome <laughs> <laughs> if if you leave an airbrush in it for like a month. <laughs> do Do you have a sonic cleaner, Carl? Uh no, I used to. Hmm, okay, yeah. I did I pick one up for those deep airbrush cleans just when it, you know, it needs it once a year or something like that. Yeah, I should probably get it. I've had they're, they're pretty cheap. They're pretty cheap. Yeah, it's like 30, 40 bucks. They're not, not I mean, they, they definitely range to be a, a lot more, but. Okay. Anybody hey, hey, chatting real, in there, Shell? Nope. Nobody's chatting in there. Real, quick, real, real quick, right. Josh. Yeah. May, maybe you can help me on this. I want to switch over from this camera to my overhead. Okay. But. Now that we're live, it's not letting me switch over. Oh, let's that's see. interesting. I went to uh, settings. Can hover over the camera button in Riverside, and it should give you an option between cameras. Okay, so should it's be the, the middle bottom. of your screen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Bottom, bottom middle of your screen. <clears throat> hmm. It brings up the options. It's just not. This is awesome. Glad uh, we it tested says you all can turn out. off the camera. It says you can turn off the camera while recording, but you can't switch cameras. Oh, interesting. What a well, uh, if you if you want to drop out real quick, you can jump back in, and it might allow you. Um, but then okay, you're going to be stuck. That. Then you'll be stuck in the other one. You might have to do it every well, time to switch with with a single camera, that, or you can join from a second window with your other camera and just mute one of them. Oh, can you have two browsers open? And do yeah, that? let's try it. Oh, that's going to, you're, oh. you're pushing the limits of technology <laughs> here, Josh. <laughs> two browser windows. Well, I want to talk, uh, I'll wait for Caleb to get back because I got a subject I want to talk about with both you guys. I'm, I'm, I'm still here, so. All right. Well, let me just start, start the conversation. Okay. But first, I have a, I have a question from the chat. Says, oh, thank uh, God. <laughs> Uh, Spencer Grant would love to hear Caleb speak to some products he does love. Ah, crap. Now Caleb's going to talk. Uh, All right. <laughs> All right, Caleb. I guess I'll, we brought oh. you here to say some stuff. So. <laughs> oh, chat about products I love. Oh, goodness. Harder There's an awful back. lot of products I love. Oh, yeah, of course. Um, oh, cool. It is letting me join on another one. So let me see if I can oh, mute neat. this microphone. So... I'm going to have to try to mute real quick so I don't get the, yeah, the back yeah. feed. All right. We'll just be quiet um, for a second. So, so camera, analog, muted. Okay, perfect, perfect. Okay, cool. Um, Caleb, talk about – here, this is a good this is a good one. Talk about things, products you like that are not necessarily paint or – like airbrushes so like the the things around that that you get in in tools and um uh even if it's like oh well i use these kinds of q-tips or you know you know what i'm saying yeah. uh -huh. i think the the paintbrush question i had for you before we went live too i think a lot of people will find that information interesting okay. too just start the there then josh go ahead. yeah yeah 
So uh, I was asking Caleb, what specific paintbrushes are his go-to workhorses? Because even though with, I'm using some really high quality Sable, these are like a, um, oil oh, yeah, yeah. oil artist brush that, you know, fancy Sables. Um, but I'm looking for something that just has better, uh, better point to it for edge highlighting specific. And Caleb had a great uh, insight and recommendation. So I'll kick it over to him to, to repeat that. Okay. But new for you all. Yeah. That all is, right. Is good, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to join this real quick and, right. uh, and then I got to mute my speaker real quick so I don't get back feed. All right. So let me do that real quick and see if this works. Oh, okay. There we go. Hey, look. Hey, look. Okay. Yeah, so there it is. Nice. Go. There we go. All right. And uh, echo, echo. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. Let me hold on. How do I mute this? There's a microphone. You just click it. Dude, that didn't. This is awesome radio. <laughs> it is totally not letting me mute this. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting slower oh, wait it stopped oh he totally muted there. both himself i muted both the caleb's <laughs> let's try it. can oh. you just mute the one? Oh, you know what? okay only How's one that? of yeah yeah that worked we can hear you caleb. um shell are you seeing all six on the live feed now because it's showing that caleb's rejoin is not recorded okay that's that's no, cool all just six wanted to double check here Okay, awesome. All right. Yeah, Sorry we're back in business. Technical issues, guys. We thought we were. It sounded like it was getting closer. <laughs> you know, one ping only, virtually. <laughs> yeah. All right. Great. Movie. Paint, paint brushes. Okay. We were All talking right. about edging. Do, do I sound okay or am I getting an echo? You, you, or sound, like you sound great. You sound great. Yeah, really it sounds good. great now. I mean, Perfect you still sound it. like Caleb, but you sound great. <laughs> I don't have to use my headphones now. That's not going to work. So, um, <laughs> You know, I'm I'm officially working for for Army Painter, so. Oh, he's locking up. Cool. This is great. Uh, Technology. Uh, and, it's Caleb, you're locking up. You're gonna have to kill all your cameras. Yeah. 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 Two two might be too much for the bandwidth. Okay, so what I'm I don't gonna know do? It's the bandwidth. I think it's the. Uh, is. I'm going to leave on one. this one. All right. How's that? Perfect. Okay. So you guys aren't going to get to look at my pretty face. So sorry, it's guys. It's your painting. That's <sighs> <laughs> um, so mean. Why does he come back? Let's put some, let's put some stuff on the camera so people can see what I'm okay. On. Yeah. Show um, the, the, you were showing Josh the paint brushes before and show me yeah. what you were talking about. So for a regiment, regiment brush is going to be, um, you know, that, that price wise being able to find it, of course, there's a lot of brushes out there. There's a lot of good brushes. There's not necessarily one brush that's going to be the best. If you, jump online and you ask you go into the heavier metal team or the heaviest metal now i guess the other site got hacked but um you go into that group and you ask what the best brush is do <sighs> buckle up 10 different answers it, yeah <laughs> 10 in the first minute and a half um buckle. because there are a lot of good brushes so really instead of talking about like what's the best brush to get because there's so many out there what you're really after is a sable brush a sable brush for the paints that we're using for the type of painting that we're doing a sable brush is usually going to be your best some people argue about that a lot of people love synthetics um but mainly what we're after is something that's going to hold a good point so and to be clear when you when you say a sable brush you're talking about the type of material used for the for the uh the the brush for itself the not yeah not uh it's not a brand right it's not a brand it's it's the type of hair um so there's wolf hair brushes there's sable hair there's weasel um 
I don't, there's so many different types, but mainly we found by we, meaning the whole painting community has found that usually the sable brushes tend to work the best. 99.9% .9 of the high end artists are using some type of the sable brush. Um, so there's a lot of companies out there that make them. Um, everybody's got their preferences. Um, a lot of it, what it comes down to is kind of the design of the brush, how big the body is, what kind of spring stuff like that. Um, it pay it that plays a big part in the comfort of a paintbrush. But what we're after mainly is that point, mm -hmm. how the end of that brush. I'm putting it over white so you can see it a little bit. Let me zoom in a little bit so you guys can see this pretty good. Um, so what we're looking for is a brush that's going to hold a good point, and we want a brush that when you press down, it doesn't split. A lot of times when you start to paint with a brush, it'll do something like, it'd be hard to make this one do it. It'll do no, something like that. Exactly what you're, yeah. You, yeah. See how, you see how you get some hairs that start to kind of <laughs> yeah. blow out from the side stuff. That's called splitting. Now, you can buy two brushes of the exact same brand, and one will hold a perfect point, and one will split. Um, it's just, that's kind of some of the stuff that happens in the manufacturing of the brushes. Maybe there's a defect in the hair, a defect in the glue, et cetera, et cetera. So once you find those brushes that hold a good point, you're going to be after that. I prefer a size three brush. So my preference brush is actually this much larger brush right here. Yeah, that's really this interesting. Size three. The reason for that is I want to be able to carry a lot of paint and I want to carry a lot of flow because when I go in and I grab paint with my brush, I don't fill my entire brush up with paint. I only load my brush about to the back side. But what you'll hear is right before I go in and grab paint, you hear me kind of tapping on my on my water bowl, is because what I'm doing is preloading my brush with water. I'm going to go in and I'm going to grab a little water. I'm a brush licker. So when I <laughs> when I go in and grab water, I'm going to quickly lick the moisture off of it. You can also use a paper towel and just dab your brush on the paper towel to clean it. But we just want enough moisture on our brush that it's not flowing. You can see if I paint on my finger, it doesn't really flow a bunch of water. It's just yeah. kind of cool to the touch. It's just a little bit of moisture. You might see just a little bit of glossiness from it. But what it's happening is it's loading moisture in the back of the brush. Because it's got a nice big volume to it, now I can hold a decent amount of paint in the front of the brush and I can go back and I can keep painting. If I go in and I start, try to do a lot of my painting with a brush like this, with these little tiny hairs, a lot of people like, like a double lot or a triple lot or something like this, you're just not going to get a lot of paint flow. One, you can't load much, much moisture in the back of this brush. And you can't load much paint in this brush without loading the entire bristle with paint. And once you've loaded the entire bristle with paint, you lose kind of that um, capillary action, that flow of the paint off the brush. Mm -hmm. And that's what yeah. that moisture yeah. at the back of the brush helps do is it helps to flow the paint off. So a really small brush like this, I mean, even freehand, I'm not really using a brush like this. Very, very rarely am I going to come in with anything this small. My mm -hmm. double lots, triple lots, stuff like that, they really don't see much use at all. I'm trying to think of the last time I've actually used well, one. Uh, what about what about like doing eyes on a space? Yeah, I was just going to ask. Uh, I'm going to use this brush. Because... Three? Yeah, because I'm not... Because <laughs> of the, the point on that? Yeah. I'm not... I'm not using the tip of the brush to dot an eye. Yeah. You're using the edge. I'm using the side of the brush to dot an eye. And I use the sculpt of the eye to dot it. Um, yeah. You showed me that when you came over to, to do shells night lords, you were, um, you were uh, showing how you just, you lay it kind of almost parallel to the helmet just so that the eyeball, the curve of the eyeball catch caught it. I thought that was pretty interesting. <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of little tricks. I'm trying to see if I have a pen around here. I could draw on it, but um, yeah, that's okay. Yeah, like 99% of my painting is going to be done with this bigger brush just because it holds a nice point to it. And then I'm going to be able to go in and do the detail work and do everything like that. So, really, the brand of brush isn't super important as long as that brush holds a good point. Now, the reason that you get a lot of artists that talk about different brushes and, um, me personally, I can't stand Windsor Newtons. Yeah, they're, that was they're, a hot they're, thing a number of years ago. 
I use a lot of them, but the points just don't work for minis. It, it depends on on a lot on which brush you're buying and stuff like that. A lot of people have a lot of good good results with their Windsor Newtons. The reason I don't like the Windsor Newton is um, when I first started painting miniatures, I started on Raphael's, and Raphael's are a little bit bigger brush and they're also a little bit firmer in the bristle in the snap. When you bend a brush like this, how quick it flicks back is called the snap. Um, I like a little bit firmer of a snap in my brush. So the the Windsor Newtons, the the barrels are usually a little too small for me. They they yeah. just don't have yeah. the feel yeah. that I like. And then I don't get the snap with it. So I don't like the Windsor Newtons. It feels like the brush flop a little bit when I'm painting a miniature. Yeah. Um, so I don't care for those. But then you'll talk to other artists. I'm trying to think of some of them that, that love the Windsor Newton. And I think like Eric's, well, maybe Eric doesn't. I don't want to speak for Eric, but um, there's a lot of artists out there that absolutely love them because they like the feel of that brush, learning that feel. Um, so really it, it's worth kind of trying out a couple of the the higher end brushes, the the the, the good brushes out there. And once Rose you Mary. find one that doesn't split, take care of it. <laughs> yeah yeah and awesome. and definitely um so the brush i'm showing here right now is one of the artist opus brushes um yeah. uh very good brush um rosemary uh rosemary and company a good brush windsor newton a good brush um raphael is a good brush uh if you want to stay uh u.s based uh sharf makes a set of brushes they're a bit more expensive they're really good brushes. in fact i think i might have one or two in here yeah here's a sharp right here um so here's a sharp size two it's kind of a raphael clone i mean this is a size two look at that I mean, body. realistically Ooh. aren't they all Compared to a size three so with brushes yeah. even the size that you're using is going to vary so this is a size two this is a size three but you can see that size two is much larger um, yeah. whereas if you were to take a windsor newton it might be even smaller and be like a size four or something yeah, so there's a lot of variations out there, but once you find that set of brushes that you like, um, that's where you want to do it. But I highly suggest if you're going to kind of get into painting, invest in a good set of brushes. That's the biggest thing for like what you're talking about, your edge highlighting and stuff. Yeah. Yep. Invest in a good set of brushes and then take care of that set. I probably wouldn't do like a lot of base coating or stippling or any of that heavy paint. Um, metallics are going to be just fine in it. I know that there's kind of this, this belief that me that metallic paints ruin your brush. You, you you're gonna ha you're gonna have good results with it as long as you're taking care of your brush. Okay. Um, metallics shouldn't hurt it. So other than brushes, like what other products do you like? Do you use that you're like, oh yeah, I always have these kinds of things sitting nearby as I'm painting, or you know what have you. Um. So some type of an anti-shine whether it's here's the army painter um anti-shine ak ultra matte um one of those i find Is it, this isn't is, that just a sealant like a but that's a matte seal yes i mean i think that's are, what a lot of people use it for um are I'm you, yeah, are you varnishing or are you mixing that in with your paint I, i'm mixing this in with my paints oh mm. um Okay. Adding it, I have found um, adding an anti shine, um, getting a little bit of that matte finish to your brush will help with. You, you ever notice a lot of times, like when you're glazing and you're glossing and you're doing a lot of paints like that, your paint becomes kind of plasticky and your next layers don't really want to lay. They want a sheet. Yeah, and yeah. and it's really hard to get the paint to lay. The the paint wants to push across, or maybe you get a nice good glaze laid down, and then all of a sudden the the paint will like kind of pull itself up and kind of separate and suck up into little own, own little like bubbles or pockets or something like that. I don't know. Yeah. We call it sheeting. Um, but adding a little anti shine will help with the surface below having a next enough texture that your next layers will lay a little smoother um, and it'll give you a little more control of your paint on your model. Um, and the other thing is, is it helps to uh, knock down any types of glossiness. I like a matte finish when I'm painting with a matte finish, I can really see 
where I'm placing paint and where I'm pl place, placing light, I don't get all the reflections that I end up kind of chasing, especially if I'm doing like non-metallic metals or something like that. I don't want to chase a reflection. I like to be able yeah. to, to yeah. see where my light is at. So I use a lot of anti-shine mixed in with um, my standard paints. Um, okay. I don't add this airbrushing unless I'm using um, a medium to thin my paints. I don't really thin my airbrush paints anymore with with a thinner. Um, I like to use a, straight up a glazed medium. Okay, okay. So Russell's asking, yeah. what water pot of choice is, is, your, cho is your choice, Caleb? <laughs> Army painter One with water label. <laughs> Don't drink it. <laughs> <laughs> I just I just use a, a regular cup. I use this but, this giant mug that I yeah. have. It's full of filthy water at the moment. I should go. Yeah. I've it. I've yeah. had this Oakland A's beer glass for the last <laughs> 20 years. Uh that has <laughs> I, I think this was my first uh public like ballpark beer, and I had the cup, and that's <laughs> Just been my 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 glass that's, for twenty that's twenty really years funny. now. Yeah, <laughs> that's really funny. Yeah, there there's a lot of really neat products out there for for paint cups. Um, the GW cup is that one's actually pretty clever. It's very clever. It's it's very clever, and a lot of the things that they have on there's a lot of thought that went into that. Yeah. Um, that's pretty cool. Um, yeah. But. Yeah, I'm the old school. Just a regular coffee mug is is my go to. Yeah, yeah my yeah. go to water. Um, That's funny. The, the other product that I use all the time is going to be my wet palette. Um, one, I, I live in Nevada, so there's not much moisture. I mean, if you look outside right now, there's a bunch of snow and stuff. But um, for the moisture. most part, that's not moisture. Yeah, that's not moisture. But um, for the most part, I'm gonna paint with a wet palette. Um, I, I'm just kind of programmed for that. A lot of the classes that I teach, we might not be using wet palettes there, but I'm not really painting at that point. I'm just really showing technique. Usually my students' yeah. models look better than mine because I'm just really trying to bang through showing a technique. Yeah. Um, yeah. So at home, yeah, I definitely use a, a wet palette for all of my painting. Uh, even putting speed paints, stuff like that, I, I, I'm always putting onto my wet palette. I started using this uh, this popper thing, right? It's like one of those um, kids fidget pop it. Kids fidget poppers, but it's silicon, mm -hmm. so the paint doesn't really stick well to it. And um, so I'll put a couple drops in there. I'll paint right from there, and then once I'm done and it's all dried out, I just go pop it, and all the paint comes out in little discs into the garbage can. Oh, that's kind of nice. And then I'm done. And then I just move on. It's been pretty handy. I saw it on a YouTube channel somewhere and then uh, I picked, I had ordered one and, and it works really, really well. Um, okay. Uh, let's, let's, since Caleb, you're talking brushes and you're uh, talking a few things there. Let's, but let's, let's move on topics just real quick. Uh, Cause I got actually several I want to go through and we're 45 minutes in and we haven't <laughs> talked about any of these <laughs> topics and I have some that I need to talk to, to both of you guys about. Uh, the first is, um, okay. So the first is Josh and I have heard a, a couple people have asked us about it. And then Josh brought it up to me a little while ago um, about doing the hobby progress challenge. And if you are new to the independent characters, the last time we did this was 2015, <laughs> as I went back. Is it really that long ago? Uh, yeah. Um, and what the Hobby Progress Challenge was, was, and, and you're the first ones to hear about. This is kind of preliminary if you're here, because um, we haven't announced it on the show, and we won't for just a little bit longer. I'm about to head off to Australia, so... Um, the Hobby Progress Challenge was, I think we called it the War on Gray Plastic. And what we did was we gathered up a, quite a few prizes um, and we put a challenge to everybody to uh, paint a unit a month. And originally it started off 
fairly strict. It was like, oh, we want people to have a completed army by the end of this. Okay, this month you're going to paint a HQ. This month you're going to paint a whatever. But we realized that was probably too too restrictive. So what we ended up doing was saying, you know, hey, you paint a unit a month, um, and you post, uh, you know, here's here's the before picture uh, at the beginning of the month, and then once you complete painting it, you post up here. I've com I've completed painting this thing, and you know, we keep track of that throughout a twelve month period. And then people who have completed or completed the most, you know, when get entered into drawings for those people who have, uh, who are tied and, and give away prizes, that kind of thing. So we've been talking about doing that again. Um, and it, that helps me too, because I, I participate in it along with the listeners. And for me, I was talking about, you know, I've gotten a lot of Black Legion stuff done. I'm uh, still doing some Black Legion stuff, but I'm I'm getting to the point where I've got enough that I can put on the table and have a few variations of <clears throat> a list. I have this huge amount of Sisters of Battle that came out <laughs> that I assembled yeah, yeah, a bunch dude. of uh, when they came out, and I have not painted any of them. Um, and so I would use the Hobby Progress Challenge to paint up a full Sisters army and uh get sisters of, of battle going um and so i spent some time i'm going to talk for a little bit here so you guys can chill uh i spent <laughs> <laughs> i spent some time um uh making a list now i've never played sisters of battle either i just love them conceptually and god i hope i enjoy playing them um <clears throat> but uh, uh i spent some time building uh, a list a 2000 point list um and man, that's a lot of units. Uh, it's they're smaller than I'm used to painting because I'm used to painting like Space Marines. Sisters are significantly smaller with quite a bit of detail on them. Um, so it came out to something like 19 or 20 units, 22 units maybe. Um, and uh, then I started looking at okay, what do I have <clears throat> already assembled? And I and fortunately I had the majority of it already assembled. Of, of the list that I had created, uh, luckily. And then I looked at, well, what do I still have in boxes? Because I have a bunch of stuff still in boxes. I went way overboard when I bought those sisters. <laughs> um, I have a whole bunch of stuff still in boxes. Okay, do I have, okay, I got to build this unit and I got to build that unit, but I have them. And then here's where I don't have enough of this unit. So I need to uh, buy or trade for um a couple a couple units here uh fortunately i don't really need need much um mostly it's you know. like oh i have seraphim but i need two per squad that have flamer pistols and these don't have flamer pistols so okay i'll need to figure something out i could probably just cut off some flamer pistols and put them on there if i can find some so anyway i went through that whole process i've got this really cool list i think that will be a lot of fun i was talking to you a little bit about it uh josh the other day when we were playing adeptus titanicus yeah. um but uh as i looked at the sisters and painting them and this is where you come in caleb um they as i said they're a lot smaller than marines so i have not painted something like this before um not that the techniques are are terribly different but when you paint a marine let's say i'm painting ultramarines there the majority of it is is blue right so okay i go through these steps i use an airbrush i paint it all blue i do this i do that with sisters they are their armor is usually one color the robes with it they wear and there's quite a bit of robes on most of them or cloaks are another color so there's not like one major dominant color and so I was curious, you said you had some tips uh, or techniques for speedily getting through sisters, Caleb. And I was curious a little bit about how, how do you get around that not dominant color? Now, that being said, before you start your answer, uh, the ones I'm gonna do are uh, the Bloody Rose, Order of the Bloody Rose. So their armor's red, uh, their cloaks mm -hmm. are black on the outside with off-white on the inside. And as I looked at the models, I was like, okay, you know what? Actually, there is quite a bit of armor on these. But still, I wouldn't want to 
paint the entire thing red i don't think with an airbrush because that's a bit overkill so what's what's your suggested approach there so what i like to do um when i when i have a commission of something of kind of that magnitude to where uh -huh. you're you're you've got a lot of variations in color um you've got a, a lot of variations in texture and like you said space marine a lot of a one dominant color right um also a lot broader larger shapes the details are still there but the details tend to be more minute compared to the armor so you can really kind of go go ham on the armor and then yeah. go in and pick out all the details whereas when you get with a sister <clears throat> the, the armor is considerably more detail to it it seems that way because of just the sculpt and the new sisters are just so They're incredible the, the the detail and the work that they put into them are really nice yeah. um so what what i like to do <clears throat> is find colors that are going to be complementary um yes you're stuck to a color theme but what you can do is use complementary shadows and i use this a lot in in my commission painting is <clears throat> if you notice on this model here can you guys see that pretty good? Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's yeah. upside yeah. down, but sure. <laughs> <laughs> we got it. We can see it. There we go. So <clears throat> my basis color is that dark blue. Uh huh. And obviously that dark blue is going to accent the most through the armor because I'm using a, a, a blue-black based armor. Um but then you'll look at my shadow colors into my cloth is that same blue okay so what happens is is when i base coat my color even though that armor might be the darker color you're talking about red being the more dominant color yeah i'm going to paint that model all red i do speed speed paint but i wouldn't go to your bright red go to your very subdued dark red um you're going to create the shadows first okay of the model so i'd come in <clears throat> and let's say the new the new model that i'm going to paint right here i'm going to come in and i'm going to i'm going to airbrush something really really dark maybe okay. maybe a red like something like this like dark and Slaughter then we know the, the we know the, okay. the inherent transparency of the airbrush and all that stuff yeah this is a speed paint so this is gonna be super super transparent but let's say we're using this dark blood red as a just a regular air paint yeah um, but that's kind of what you want right you want that transparency right. yeah so let's we're gonna use this one right here this chimera red okay this would be my base coat color for the model do you want me to paint it real quick or do you want me to just explain oh we got time <laughs> <laughs> Hold on one second. Let me turn my airbrush on. Oh, here it goes. All right. Oh. Man, now it really is a class. Like, I know. Yeah, it's live demonstration. I, I, I don't. Yeah, I don't need the whole process all, all the way. But I'm, I'm very curious to see how you get started because, as I was mentioning, you know, as, as he gets prepared, um, yeah, like he was saying with a, with a the space marine it's super easy it's like you know hey do this uh maybe you do the shading before you spray whatever and then okay you've got it shaded and then maybe you do a wash and highlight and then okay now you can start working on the details because the armor is effectively done except for edging um, yeah i'm actually this, curious to see if he does a pre-shade or just goes straight for it with the, the yeah. contrast yeah yeah well i don't think black. he's using the contrast he's using that slaughter red or whatever oh, it was it's an air paint. Uh, that was a speed paint though. Well, oh, no, he, the first the first one he showed was a speed paint. Now he's used in the Got air it. paint. Okay. So I'm gonna put down a paper towel so I don't spray on my my mat. Yeah, why don't you do that? Where are we at? There we are. I'm gonna zoom back out a little bit so you guys can kind of see this a little better. Yeah. Now you don't have to do this with an airbrush. If if you don't have an airbrush and you're just base coating. I would probably only paint the army, uh, the armor, not the army. I'd right. probably only paint the armor with the brush. With the airbrush, I'm going to end up kind of painting quite a bit just because I don't have as much control. Yeah. Um, 
as much detail and stuff like that. But I am going to try to block out as much as I can with it as I'm painting it. So, you so you're see trying how to mostly that. just get the armor. Right. And you can see how dark that, that initial coat is. Um, yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in, and of course I'm going to do my directional base coating. I'm going to spray down from the top. And I'm mainly trying to concentrate on the main areas of the armor. Don't worry about spraying all the armor. Don't like you can spray. see, okay. you can see right in here into these recesses. I'm not putting any paint in there. Okay. In those separations. Yeah. I'm just mainly trying to hit the light areas of the armor because we're going to come back in and we'll end up picking up all those those little details. So I'm just going to kind of mainly hit those those main areas that I want to be that that red color, that that bright okay. red. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I got gotcha. you. Okay, so like right here I'm going to hit the back of the leg. Top of the foot. So I'm being relatively precise. And I'm going to do like two or three coats because I want to start to build up just a little bit of opacity. You can see like right at the top of the head, it's quite a bit brighter than okay. the leg. So I'm just drying real quick. And I've brought those colors up, but they're still pretty muted. It's okay. pretty dark. Yeah. This isn't going to overpower any of the cloth that I'm trying to paint because the cloth is going to be a different color. Um, yep. Especially the undersides being white, like this area right here. Um, mm -hmm. I want to be careful about not overpowering that too much. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and just get that that basis down and i'm just going to flush out my brush real quick <laughs> i was not intending for caleb to give us a whole painting tutorial during this but yeah but that just happens when you're it, around caleb it, it does just happens. it does <laughs> it does an airbrush Gosh, magically just... appears in his hand share the knowledge and I, yeah I like my airbrush is 400 feet thing. away i couldn't just bust it out on camera <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i'm so sick of doing this I, although i've gotten a lot right, so so, so now I've got this base down. I've kind of yeah. created the, the shape and all that stuff. So now we're going to move into kind of that slap chop idea. Okay. So I'm going to take kind of like we did with the Night Lords. Exactly. So I'm going to take some uh, some dragon red. This is one of the new fanatic colors. Intense. I'm going to put a little bit on my dry brush. Yeah, yeah. Now I'm pretty heavy with the paint. You can see right there. I've got quite a bit of paint on my dry brush. Okay. Um, I want to be pretty heavy because I'm going to come in and I'm just going to start creating the shape of the armor. And I'm, I'm always dry, dry brushing in a downward motion okay. because this is just going to pick up the details on top of the model. This is a pretty big dry brush. I could probably go with a smaller one, but I don't have one out right now. And that's accentuating your zenithal shadows that you've been working on. Too, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So now you can see how I'm getting some on the cloth right here. Yeah. But you're going to just go in and correct the cloth, right? Right. Later. Right. Because yeah. that's going to be the easiest correction. That's what I thought. So, so I've brought that bright area up right there like that. Okay. I'll do just a little bit more on the backpack. There you go. Sister of battle done. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to be so easy. Now I'm going to go in with just a brighter color. I'm just going to take a little bit of white and mix it with my red. So it's just kind of fast. So mm -hmm, I've got like mm -hmm. more of a pink. Yeah, Carl. If you don't bust out Sisters of Battle in a month also, I don't even know what you're doing. That's true. <laughs> That's true. Probably getting a divorce. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I think Caleb froze up. I think he did. When you start. You know what... Oh, he's back. Uh huh. You froze up for a second there, but yeah, we got you. Did I freeze? Did I freeze up? Yeah, yeah. just for a There's second. just too You're much back. awesomeness with the pain. The camera can't handle it. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably what it is. 
Um, so what I was saying was, you can see there's a lot less paint on my dry brush now. Yeah. If I go yeah. in and I try to, to brush onto my paper towel, you can see there's just not much more paint. So this starts to allow a lot more of a smooth application to it. You can see it's starting to, to pick up the light of the model. So this is yeah. just the basics of Slap Chop, right? Yep. I'm going to come in with some pure white. I didn't clear my brush. I'm just going with the pure white right on top of the red. It's going to mix in a little bit with the existing red that's on my brush. Okay. And it just allows for a little bit smoother of a transition. I'm just going to quickly do that. I'm going to add just a little bit more white to my palette because I didn't have much on it. Every time I think I have, um, I'm like, oh, I think I'm done with the gold edging. And then I'm like, oh, no, there's a whole other. Panel. And then you turn the model. <laughs> then you turn the model again. You're like, how did I miss that whole panel? Why did I put myself through this? <laughs> All right. So <clears throat> at this point, the armor is almost to the point where like all of our light is hitting a lot of times if you if you frozen up again yep <laughs> yeah darn you know some of this is too probably Caleb's up there where snow is yeah he's in the middle of the blizzard still yeah dang i feel i feel bad he left early for work to come do this and share this with us and not a all right shell you want to message caleb tell him he's frozen up oh he's coming oh, back he's, he's back. back he's back oh did i come back i was just yeah. getting ready to close it's saying that the other river riverside browser tabs but i closed out the other riverside browser tab do you have any other tabs open no hmm. Uh, Do you have a here. separate window, not as a tab, but as a full separate window? That's what I'm looking for. No, I only have the single. I only have the single window. Hmm. Well, it's showing anyway, like ninety percent. So I, I get the the uh, I get what you're going for here, though. So now you've got all that white on her, though. W what are you going to do with that? All right, so we just do that basic slap top, right? So I come in and do a speed paint of the red you want, the red or whatever, right? Um, I tend, I like to use the the airbrush more. Yeah. So I'm going to use Carmen Dragon because I'm, I'm assuming that that the Bloody Rose would be more of a bright red, not a dark red. Oh, I, I'm going dark red, but you know, you you're going dark you're red too. Yeah, yeah. But that's okay, well, let's do. let's go with with uh, let's go with red is such a tricky color for me. Blood red. red. Yeah. Okay. Red do you want an orange a red or a red red? A red red. Red red. red, red? Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna go back to slaughter. My red my is, yeah. Red is such a, a um, tricky color for me because um, too light. I don't like it. You know, it has to be a very deep, dark red for me to, to appreciate red. And you really don't like that orange tint. And I do not like the orange tint. Yeah, yeah. that's my jam. I, <laughs> I personally like prefer a blue red. Yeah. Interesting. I think I see what he's going for, though. That's going to help. All right, so at this point, pretty much all I need to do is go in and do my edge highlights to finish yeah. my armor, right? My armor yeah. is done. I don't really quick, need yeah. to do much more, <laughs> much more work on that. But we want that differentiation in the cloth. Now, because I use that same base of that really nice dark, my cloth is going to use that same color. So what color is the, the cloth normally? Uh, black on the outside and then uh, off white on the inside. You said inside like twice. Black on the outside. Did I say that? Yep. Okay. Black on the outside, off white on the in interior. There you go. I can't believe how many tanks you're you're painting, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> 
Caleb, what makes something red, blue, and not purple? That's a good question. That's Russell asked that question. That's a good question. I think he's frozen up. We might have to repeat of that. Of course he is. Oh, for God's sake. So, <laughs> so find two colors that are a blue, red, and a purple, red. Do I have a purple, red? Normally we mix those colors. Um, so what are familiar colors? I'm trying to think of what familiar colors would be. Um, let's talk GW colors because I know the names of GW colors, right? Sure. If you look at a Mephiston red, a Mephiston uh -huh. red is going to be a very vibrant red, but it borders slightly onto the blue tint. If you look at Mephiston red, it, it's it's always got a nice – you ever notice that some red shade really well? They get a nice deep shade to them. Those are usually like slightly blued into it. So you're looking at like a Mephiston red. It's got a little bit of blue into it, which is going to create that nice depth to it, that, that, that kind of um, – I don't know what you call it, that, that, that vibrant – that that okay. really vibrant feel to it. I don't know if you guys can really see this color. It's, it's kind of hard to see in the dark. Days. Yeah, in the cameras. Um, but let's you know what we can we can compare a couple of speed paint colors. So you guys can kind of see the variations on the colors of these three. Yeah, that shows up well. Yes, yeah, for sure. And then let's go with murder yeah right here perfect here's great examples right here so we have our base red so carmen red figure that's like a pure red right that's going to be fire engine red okay. now if we move to poppy red poppy red is going to be more like um Woo's daca red or um I'm trying to think of other company names um were like worm time time red something like I think that the, the one i like is the flesh terrors red it's a dark it's a pretty dark red flesh terrors is going to be more of that slightly blue red but more into the purple red okay when you get into the flesh terrors that's why it, why it makes flesh terror <laughs> color make such a nice dark color yeah. it's got that nice depth of blue to it but you can shift into the purple so if you look at this very far end this murder scene Murder scene's got a lot of purple. A lot of purple. That's a great yeah. name, yeah. And you know, it, <laughs> you guys see the they did a really good job of explaining the colors. So here at the bottom it explains the color. It says it's a black purplish red. Oh, interesting. So oh, you, they literally say that on the bottle. Yeah. Right. It says that right there. I've never even noticed that before. So <laughs> um this, this is that very purple red. Imagine a coral color. Yeah. Coral red is going to have a lot of purple in it. Not necessarily purple. What we're doing is we're introducing a lot of magenta. And magenta yeah. will read as purple when it gets darkened. Um, when you start to add dark to it, it'll start to get that purple. Whereas this slaughter red, this is this is reading as a deep red. Well, we all know how a black is made, right? If you're going to make a, a black color, you want to create that depth, paint manufacturers add a little blue to it. And that's okay. going to create depth of your black so when you're looking at that deeper red there's a little bit of blue introduced to this but you have to be real careful with this if you just take pure blue and introduce it to this red um you're going to get kind of a spider-man color feel okay um because spider-man is a lot of of um uh, contrast of blue and red okay so you'll get a it's weird you'll look at it and you get a slightly spider-man-y feel to it but this is going to make that nice kind of a cool red and what's that one is that the slaughter red this is a slaughter red so that's the yeah, color I like that that i put down on this model now here i didn't get a lot of coverage over over the white so you see how it turned a little pink yeah. that's going to be normal but here where i've got that that depth of color where i went more almost into the opaque do you see uh -huh. how that that red becomes a little richer and a little more yeah. vibrant that's yeah. That's the blue contrast with it. What it's doing is it's cooling down that color. Um, when you can cool down a color, you'll create a little more vibrancy for it. Now, if I go in and I shoot poppy red over it like this. Yeah, yeah. 
I'm going to end up with, instead of a really cool red, I'm going to have a hot red. Yeah. Like, yeah. You like, you see how orange that is? Yeah, that's a lot of orange there. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah see, that's like what I that. absolutely don't like. <laughs> Like a Woosdaka. This color over the whites is going to create a red much like this. Okay. Because of the orange base in it. So. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. All right. um, I think, yeah, you, you've kind of set me on the right path for um, for how to do it. And, and you know, it, it, I've been experimenting a lot with um, the techniques we used on the Night Lord shell where we were doing a bit of the a combination of of airbrushing and then using um the slap chop method and then filtering over that and it really does get you such a nice variation of of things it's 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 a really cool approach feels like cheating sometimes <laughs> right you know because it works so well a lot a lot of these techniques are super fast so the black's going to be pretty easy to do, right? We've already got a basis of black. Yeah. I'm going to use a blue-based black because mm -hmm. I've got a lot of blue that's going to be in my red. And I know I can shadow with blue. I can go in on my red and I can shoot. Um, where is it? Uh, Tyr Tyrian, Tyrian Navy. I can okay. shoot this as my shadow to really God. create my depth. And this shadow color can be the shadow for black as well as red. So your your black is going to paint a lot like this style right here of black. You see how it's kind of a gray-based black? Yes. Whereas, yes. whereas this black is a green-based black. Yeah, this yeah, would be a saying. good black for this red. Yeah. You can yeah, see yeah. how warm my reds are on this model. Yeah, because of the greens, I got to stay warm. So yeah. here I'm cooling this down so I can paint a cool black. I can paint a cool black too. You can almost see how the, the black. Yeah, yep. that's the exact black I want right there. Now, the white is going to be the tricky color because if I go in and I try to use warm colors as my basis to build up my off white, mm -hmm. it's going to show every brush stroke. <laughs> it's just. Yeah. The way the system works is the way the eye picks up light and all that stuff. So instead of going in with a, a warm base for my colors, I'm going to come in with a cool base for my colors. Oh, so this so is a work up from a, a blue gray to a from a blue gray. Exactly. So I'm going to yeah, start that off. Makes sense. I'm going to start off and I need to kind of erase my red. So to erase my red, I'm going to use a darker color. I'm not going yeah. to go with a really light color because, again, you'll see a lot of your brush strokes. Of course. So I'm, going yeah, use, of course. Yep. I'm going to use this deep gray first. And then what I'll do is I'll walk up. I'll, I'll intermix this light blue with yep. that gray. And I'll make just a couple of shades of that light gray. Yeah, that makes sense. And then the light goes on. And then the, yeah. Very so little I'm white, gonna, actually. You're going to build up to – it's going to be an off-white, so. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I'm looking for like, an off-white. You're going for, like, bone, Carl, is what you're thinking? Almost, yeah, a little, little lighter than bone, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Bone won't work with this, but I'll show you how to make it look like bone. Yeah, exactly. So you can see I've started off with my first gray. Yeah. You see how dark – you see how dark this color looks in the pot? Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at how much brighter it already looks on the model. Caleb, is that a you just showed that paint again? Can you show that again? Was it a um, was that a fanatic paint? Hey, uh, that was yeah, even yeah. scale. Oh, he's he's back. Man, that sucks. Oh, you're back. You're back. You're okay. back. So what were you asking? You just started to ask a question. Yeah, was was that a fanatic paint? That one you just used, the gray. Yes, that's also another thing. I'm kind of cheating. Um, no, that's okay. Look at the coverage that it gave. Fantastic. Yeah. No, it's incredible. Yeah. So, wow, I have no. not used it yet, so I didn't yeah. know. 
Josh, the working that. time too, because it just it stays moist. <laughs> yeah, that is really cool. heavily pigmented and really good working time. It's a great, great range. So, so now I've mixed a little bit of that lighter blue with the deep gray. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Created my next color. Maybe just a touch too light. But I'm going to come in and it's a little hard to paint upside down, but. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right for your camera. Oh, what are you building up towards right now before you're going to. I'm going to build up your off white. I'm going to build up to. Where did I put it? I'm going to build up to auger, auger blue. Okay. But auger blue is not going to look blue because I'm, I'm basing it off of the reds and the reds are, are, are a blue based red. So what's going to happen is, is this color is going to develop more into and trick the eye into seeing a white. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say, is this because of the uh, the red undercoat, or is this just because the colors being in close proximity to each other is the colors kind of being in? Yeah, exactly. The colors being in pro close proximity. Um, I, I actually covered all the red with that really that dark gray. gray. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's why. Yeah. I'm gonna spend a lot answer. of time. You kind of answered the questions I was going to have, which which is exactly you're doing exactly what I thought. Air, go in, try to airbrush the the red in, you know, do the the dry brushing and then filter and then go in and you're you're doing the cloak by hand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And I'm going to bring this cloak all the way up to my pure white. So I'm doing this kind of fast. And you can see, I just went to that pure, that light blue, mm -hmm. but you see how it does not read as blue. Yeah. Oh yeah. It, re yeah. it reads as gray. That's I mean, as white, I'm sorry. Um, because it's, it's fighting the reds. So you see it, you see it in the, in the pot and you're like, man, that's blue. I don't want my white to look blue. I want my white to lavender. look white. Yeah. Right. And now so because weird. you're basing with those other colors, it's nice and white. So then I'm going to come back in now with my airbrush. And I'm going to take my speed paint. Now here I want to be, let me, let me get rid of the red real quick. Hold on one second. Uh, where did I put my yeah, red? If you don't, there it is. If you don't clear that red out, you're going to have a nice pink color coming. Well, I'm not going to airbrush with white. Okay. I've, I've pretty much done all of the white. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to tie the two portions of the model together so that we have just a little bit of harmony with it. So I'm taking that, that Tyrian navy, right? So it's this kind of blue base black. Think Payne's gray almost. Yep, yep. So you can oh, see yeah, it right there as it. I spray it. It's kind of a Payne's yep. gray. Now at a really hard angle... I'm just going to gently glance across the cloth just to hit just a little bit of those shadows. Yeah. Hey, now we can tell when he locks up. Nice. Because the, yeah, the airbrush goes away. <laughs> yeah. Right. So it harmonized those two colors, and now our edge highlights will just flow into each other. Interesting. And you're going to keep that really nice value. So if you, as, you, as I move this up and you kind of looking down on it as, a, as you look at a normal model, you can see I've got a nice cloth right there. That's kind yeah. of bright. Now, if you've decided, okay, well, I want it to be just a touch more bright, what I'll do is just come back in with that same light color, that auger blue. So I'm going to use it as Storm Wolf is their, their kind of matching color. Mm-hmm. And with the airbrush, I'm just going to spray at this little angle right here. So if I move that model, it's going to be kind of hard to see. You see how looking down at that model, you just see that little bit of the cloth that's folded out? Yes. 
I'm going to spray onto the onto my paper, and I just put a little blast right there just to smooth it out. Jeez. And now you can see you've got a really nice white cloak. And then just come back and do your edge highlights. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I like how um, you're like, I got a really easy way to do sisters for you, Carl. You're going to love it. I'm like, yeah. This is this is the part where he was showing us how to paint night lords, and then he turns to Shell and I. He goes, "Okay, now you guys do it," and we're like, "What? What? what? <laughs> cool, yeah. <sighs> it's gonna take a little practice, but but I've got I've got I got the concepts. I have the concepts yeah. now, and you have it all in video to go back to. And I have it on video to go. If back you to. if you don't want to do this with the airbrush, like if you're not confident, you can hit that little spot right there. Oh, I am actually just just use your speed paint. Yeah, yeah. So so grab your white speed paint. So I would use something maybe like Ash and Stone. So you can see it's got that slight blue tint to it, right? You don't want to use a bone color. You don't want to use um, okay. a gray color, something like that. You're going to want to use that Ash and Stone. Oh. Color theory is so interesting to me because, like, I could not get to this on my own without somebody – I'm such a paint by numbers guy. You know, somebody has to tell me, here's the recipe. Oh, okay, got it. You know, and then I can go fly. Well, you just got the recipe. I know. That's what I'm saying. All right. So next time I do this, Caleb, uh, walk me through painting an Eldar army that's going to be <laughs> orange, bone, and black. <laughs> <laughs> and using your cool stencils. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. The those uh jet bikes you've been working on are phenomenal those look so <laughs> good those look so those good. were very okay fun. all right i got we got jeez louise this is going fast we got 40 minutes left i still got some <laughs> topics to cover all right caleb we're gonna we're gonna shift gears here for okay me. sorry okay have you guys so i i mentioned earlier i i have some sisters that i still need to assemble and i was assembling a few today after doing my job search activities uh and i ran into a problem with one model as i was assembling it and it was you know sometimes these games workshop models now are so interesting the way they assemble it's like attach this to this and this goes inside of this before you do this uh and as I assembled this thing, like things weren't lining up correctly. The armor wasn't closing correctly. I become very frustrated uh, hmm. with this one model in, in the set. And this was of the, uh, of these, the, uh, it's your, the sacrosanct, sacrosanct guys, uh, okay. or gals, I should say. And man, was I frustrated and I can show you the model. Like I stopped actually assembling this one. But like, I don't know if you, if you can see, there is like a huge gap in the armor right here, where the two I top see halves. A little bit. Yeah, it's it's probably hard to see on my camera. I don't have a cool camera like Caleb, but it will not go together to the point where I'm like, you know what? Screw this model. <laughs> I'm going to kit bash one of these out of just a regular sister because this is just not happening. And I, I gotta tell you like uh, this, the second time it's happened to me with a model. Um, it's, it happened to me with, uh, the chaos fantasy, um, line, the, the new chaos warlords. There was like a starter set that came with a guy riding on like mm -hmm. a, a beast. And that, uh -huh. be and I love that model and the beast did not, go to get like whatever i did i screwed up and it's and i can't fix it like i cannot get it to seal that has got to be the most frustrating aspect of assembly to me might have a Am little yeah, warp of the sprue or um could be or could the worst be model the of the intricateness that i've ever had to put together was the dark elf blood bowl team and this uh -huh. is like pieces are threading through pieces and the, a leg is eight different pieces like the shin is separate from the boot which like and this slot had it, it's a really interesting build um and that's because it's all cad designed it is yeah uh and they're very small pieces because these are elves and blood bowl so the scale's a little bit smaller compared to marines yeah um is, so is that model is that something that 
it just needs some like sprue goo to fill the gap or it's just it's not actually aligning so even if you were to fill that gap it's still not gonna look right it's not gonna look right even if i fill the gap i'm i'm just ah. and this is such a screwy one like the there's there's a leg that goes on here and the seam of the cloak has to match up the seam of the cloak on the leg yeah. and and, and and even when it lined up like you need sprue goo to fill the gap because there's like there's an evident crack down the it, this is actually of all of them like the rest all assembled beautifully but this one particular model i'm a little disappointed in so or disappointed if, in my inability to get it together correctly if you can hide it fantastic yeah if you know what if you can't if you can't hide it um what i normally will do is this takes quite a bit of work i'm going to get in there with a file i'm going to get in there with a razor knife especially where you're talking where where it's real evident yeah those cloaks yeah the cloak is just so front and center it's hard to go around so i, I think actually what i'm going to do is these guys are not so different looking from your average sister it's mostly just their armament so i think i've got tons of just base sister units i'm just going to take one of those and it would be easier to ar equip her with this mace and uh shield than go through the trouble of trying to fix this one and i think i'm just this model is going to be tossed very frustrating though to lose a model like well that. i mean you could fix that with just a little bit of green stuff um, I yeah. like to mix like a little bit of green stuff and millipet. Yeah. Um, fill that gap with that and then build that gap over the edge a little bit where the cloak needs to match up. Yeah. And then once that dries, just file those edges together. It doesn't matter if the cloak overlaps the leg a little more than it did before. Yeah, um, exactly. As long, as long as you have just a nice smooth transition, yeah. that's how I have yeah. to fix those. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, it's pretty rare that it happens. I mean, usually the GW models go together so well, even the intricate ones. But this one, like, it just, it, I don't know if I was too impatient assembling it or it was just that fiddly that I ran into a problem. So I ran into that with the, uh, in the battle box, there's like the, I don't know, she's like the matron mother saying something like she's standing there with the full big, like, gown almost. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And she's like holding a staff up with one hand. And she was the same way, like 16 different pieces to put her together. And like yeah. one cloth had to overlap the other one. And I had big gaps in that one too. Yeah. I just yeah. had to do a bunch of work on it. And I was a little frustrated with that model. Yeah. 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 I mean, it. I think it rarely happens, but when it does, it can be a little disheartening. But again, I think, you know, I slap a different backpack on a regular sister battle. I put a Mason shield on her. I think it'll i think that's the easiest fix to be honest with you they're not so blinged out. And, and use the head from this because i have all the heads with the yeah. cloth heads uh the cloth kind of cowl covering their head so anyway um yeah, yeah that, that kind of happens or maybe look at it as an opportunity to practice some of your sculpting i will i will but first i just want to get all this done <laughs> <laughs> Next i've got I've, I've got a ton of sisters assembled at the moment so um okay Next up, uh, Josh and I played Adeptus Titanicus yesterday, and we were Josh. I, you, I think you felt the same, but I was, I was gonna tell you, I felt so out of practice. I made some major mistakes, not just in like tactics stuff where I made a major mistake right after that. Even though you told me, I'm like, no, no, I'm gonna point him this way. <laughs> You're like, okay. And I'm like, sure oh, about I really, that? I really should have had him pointing the other way. Josh was 100 right, but but like, I I. If you don't know Adeptus Titanicus, have you played? Have you played it, Caleb? I have not. Okay, well, it uses terminals, meaning you have like for each Titan, you have like a little sideboard with the data of that and the tracking so your, of the shields your resource and, tracking of your yeah. reactor levels and shields and things like that. Yeah, damage, yeah. damage, and um. So I played we the old. I I played the old. This is really going to date me. Um, I played the old Star Trek. Yes, yes, Starfleet, Starfleet Battles. Yeah. Starfleet Battles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So very, very similar, right? Kind of similar, yeah. So okay. so the problem was uh, I, one of my Warhounds was taking a bunch of damage, 
we were starting to roll a bunch of stuff. Okay, we did all this. It just it blew up. It caused damage around it. And then I looked and I go, oh my god, I've been looking at the wrong terminal. This one is not damaged at all. The one that you just hit. And I just like at that point I was like, you know what? Uh, it's it's destroyed. And so you know, let's roll the damage on the other one too now. And and just it, it, it there was it was we were too far into the process to really reverse it at that point. So it was like, uh, and I felt bad. I felt like I had, uh, you know, it was, totally, it was totally my fault. No, it's not an extra, ex extra video. No, he actually okay. nuked, a, nuked a brand new Warhound. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This I one was to your detriment. So it was, yeah, it was to yeah. my detriment, which, I, you know, when you run into a situation like that, like I just felt like, and I mean, it screwed Josh and I, although honestly, our dice were screwing us so bad. It was so bad. <laughs> it, it, it was. And, 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 you know, you have those games where like one player is just super hot and Josh and I were just like, we could not make a roll to save our lives. Um, but, uh, you know, I always feel like if, if you've made a mistake and you can't go back and fix it, like you have to make it to your, to your detriment as, as we just talked about earlier. Like I can't expect the opponent on the other side to go, well, you know okay you know <laughs> like i just felt like all right these guys are yeah man yeah. and this it was obviously a friendly game and we were um just really playing to get uh sky a practice rep in anyways for his yeah uh mm -hmm. adepticon coming up yeah 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 oh, what is yeah. going on with this my camera just shifted sorry everybody um so then uh my next topic is really directed at shell who's sitting over there uh who um we haven't had a shell's kiss on the show for a while it's true yeah and i think she's kind of fallen down on the job but like <laughs> every day she's pointing out models to me in the facebook group people going, aren't looking with this. enough purple right now or involving <laughs> their kids yeah no no it's neither of those it's things. neither of those things but what's interesting is is <laughs> the level we talked about this on the last show like the level of painting and what people are producing and showing has just skyrocketed lately yeah and yeah. and and i think in our show notes like we haven't picked our our uh, elite choices this this week yet but i'm waiting to see what else comes well yeah i right? think it was either you or jody in the show notes put like something like jesus christ like how do i pick something <laughs> like is there's so many good uh things people are offering and i just you know if if you are not uh posting your pictures there or in our discord please do so because man we are looking at it every day and it's just some of that stuff has blown me away that guy who did the um he did the chaos stuff the one guy that looked like the plague doctor oh yeah yeah like, uh, i'm pretty sure that was the fabius bio base but yeah the yeah. plague mass look but it's i like wanted a mark to see, six plague mass hybrid which is really yeah cool i wanted to see more of what he did because yeah he did it unusual style like it is not the paint job is not super clean like it's actually kind of patchy in a lot of places but i think he's trying to get an effect doing that and it and it works like it's interesting i'll have especially Caleb if it's a it's, if it's a nurgle force then absolutely like yeah it's, it's, it's kind pretty, of playing it's, into it's pretty darn interesting what he's doing so um yeah is that the big tree thing is that what you were well no and Go ahead, Caleb. And one of the things I wouldn't mind saying with that is with a lot of that talk about how great a lot of the pieces are in the community. Yeah. Even if you're not painting to that quality, still share matter. your stuff. That doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah, sh share your you're stuff. still going to inspire people. And, right. And other people could be painting the exact same thing you're doing. It might give them ideas of ways to go about things, color ideas. Um, stuff like that. So it's yeah. it's always good. I love seeing a community where everybody's sharing and that people don't feel intimidated. And that's the nice thing about the independent characters is you never get that yeah. gatekeeping that well it, you shouldn't paint with that color. Oh, that's not a that's not a blue red. That's a purple red. <laughs> yeah, you don't get a lot of that stuff. So um, yeah, I, I'm really enjoying that. Yeah, it's it's one of the things I really like about. Our community in general is like everybody's just trying to help and um yeah and you got to celebrate all levels of engagement right yeah i mean listen dude i 
there are times when I paint well and times when I don't paint as well. And I've certainly improved over the years, but you know, as I talked about with uh, Caleb, I don't know if you've listened to the episode where I was talking about making all the progress on the black Legion stuff, but like what prevented me from moving forward on that project for so long were, were just a number of things that were just getting in the way. And ultimately it became like when you came over and we were looking at uh, shells, night Lords, and you were saying, oh, look how you could do Black Legion with this blue. I was like, oh, man, now I want to do it with this blue. And, you know, and it was just like one thing after another kept coming up that I kept trying to adopt. And I kept it kept me from just moving forward. And so finally, I yeah. just yeah. said, you know what? I'm just moving forward and I can't and let uh, perfection be the enemy of progress here. Exactly. I know that even Josh mentioned that quite a bit too is the the protect per, perfection side of it yeah the, the only issue with chasing perfection is you're always going to get better every time you're putting a brush to a model 100 get better so what you you think you're chasing is perfection now you're going to paint 16 models you're going to go back to that model and you'll be like oh yeah God, i got so many mistakes on that and this and, becomes yeah, yeah so this becomes an issue when you're painting an entire army though mm -hmm. versus versus just oh i'm painting this one model or a short force and then i move on yeah um and and, and it, because the thing is once you kind of i feel like once you kind of set that level standard in the army like you're gonna paint the rest of the army to kind of match that standard that's not to say you mm -hmm. can't improve things later but you you know if you make a huge leap at that point, you're going to be very dissatisfied with the rest of your army that you painted previously and have to go back and do a whole bunch again. Yeah. Keeping yeah. it consistent. And you can go back and touch stuff. Oh, uh, you know, for me, it's actually, I, I've mentioned this, I think in the past, but like going back to my Necron army, which is obviously it's a simpler paint job and the, they're not just a silver Necron army, like most of them, but um, they're, they're several steps back from what I know I'm capable as a painter. And in some ways it's refreshing to just go back and get it to that base level. And then when I have time, once I'm, you know, <laughs> caught up on projects, I will try to do some things to elevate the entire army altogether, mm -hmm. but it at least mm -hmm. gets stuff done. And it's, you know, refreshing just to be able to step back and make, take it the easy way. From the biggest time. step for me was finally getting really confident and good at doing, um, decals and man now uh -huh. i'm like now i'm like what else can i slap a decal on? <laughs> like, I'm, I'm so happy with the way decals elevate uh, you know when used appropriately elevate a model and like i can't i can't and and i'm gonna use that word as opposed to like i don't want to spend the time practicing i cannot do freehand the way caleb can <laughs> i spent three hours once trying to learn to paint a skull freehand and finally, I was just like, yeah, I'm done. I, I, I'm not going to pursue this any further. <laughs> I'm still waiting to see your NASCAR right now. My what? Your NASCAR right now with uh, all the decals just. Oh, yeah. <laughs> decked all over it. If I just put a ton of decals on a rhino. Sponsored by Chaos. Exactly. <laughs> Bloodweiser. You got to have Bloodweiser. That's right. No, I don't think we're going to go that far. But uh, I'm very happy with. The way the whole army is kind of coming out getting kind of sloppy um and and embrace using those decals um oh yeah definitely. i sure know i'm not going to go through and paint sixteen thousand imperial fist emblems no just uh, uh efficient at all no, no and if you're doing armies and stuff like that if I'm doing an individual model, it's a competition model or display model, I'll end up doing the freehand just because I can put that flair onto it. Yeah. Um, but other than that, I, I use decals so much. Uh, in fact, those Eldar, the the little um, – I forget what the name of that that craft world is, the Samhain emblem, the uh -huh. little ziggly dragon thing. Yeah, those are all yeah. – those are all decals. I'm not going to sit there and try to freehand and things like that. Um, it's relatively easy, but it's very time consuming. Yeah. So sure. I like, I like to put the decal in and then come down and do a little bit of freehand around the decal to set the decal in. And you, 
you usually can't really see the difference of a decal versus the freehand on the model. Boy, I'll tell you now that I've gotten it down, like I'm, I'm so happy with the way the the um, the uh, Black Legion decals went onto all the shoulders of my guys, and I think it just elevates the model that one step further. Yeah. There was even it's it's interesting on that decal sheet. There's also um, all these really tiny like chaos symbols. They're not um, they're just like runes, but they're all in gold. And they're individual and i ended up slapping a bunch of those all over my like obliterators and stuff just you know just to have a little bit more detail on some of those shin pads and that kind of stuff you got the real estate <laughs> yeah yeah exactly <laughs> you can tell caleb's airbrushing again <laughs> no i got a leak in my compressor and so it's not. i can see his hand oh just kicked on yeah um hold on I'll shut it yeah. off real quick. I'm done airbrushing. <laughs> Thank you for the tutorial, though. I appreciate it. Yeah, that's uh, pretty phenomenal. Um, yeah, so, so uh, you know, I think I posted a link a while back to um, the tutorial I used to, to figure out the, the transfers. And, man, it's, it's worked like a dream ever since. Worked like a dream. Um, I'm really glad I've done that. I, I'm going to put some larger... Uh, transfers on a night that i have mostly painted at this point too so i can use that night on some other stuff um so anyway going back to my point about the shell's kiss shell mm -hmm. are we gonna get a, a choice from you for this next episode there's just too many to choose from okay that wasn't what i asked <laughs> <laughs> you it guys is are you're recording tomorrow, aren't you? Uh, we were. Now it's sounding like Monday. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. But listen, here's the thing, Shell. I mean, it is interesting. In the last couple months, your um, interaction with that has changed so much. Like you have. It, it, it's funny because now on her Facebook feed, she's getting like, oh, she's like, look at this model. Look at that. I'm all, that's a professional painter that's another like, professional oh, that's painter not the independent character no it's, it's not the independent character <laughs> yeah the algorithm is feeding her all these pro oh, painters yeah. now <laughs> and she's like she's like Did wow the, the blending app? on this is really good i'm all it better be that guy's a golden demon winner. <laughs> so but it's I'll pretty join the uh the heavy metal group <laughs> yeah yeah pretty much so it is funny, but it has been fun, uh, honestly, having um, discussions with you. Like, and I mentioned this a little bit on the last show, where, which you don't listen to the show, so you don't know I talked about this. But, but um, it it is interesting to have a discussion with you. You go, oh, this looks really good, and I go, okay, well, here's let's take a close look at it. Here's here's what's wrong with it, this. Oh, why yeah, we, why this white ones? Really yeah, why this doesn't look good here, but from a from an arm's length it looks great yeah. you know um but when you compare that to this you can see how smooth this is and but then you and i were having the conversation about things look good things look good on the table or in person yeah oh they look fantastic but something about the camera yeah <laughs> changes the texture of what... catches all your errors well it's not just errors i think it just it does it pulls out the yeah. the, the thickness of the paint it pulls out the, the brush strokes more I, yeah. than it would if you were just looking at it. Agreed. When I yeah. look at Dave paints, for example, he he's a prolific painter. He's constantly painting because he's a commission painter and right. he's got his method down, but he also clearly has a good photography booth set up. And it's yeah. like, I think it's just permanently set up and he sets the models in there and they have a black background and he takes the shots and, but they always look so smooth so, and good. So clean. And I think some of that, and Josh could probably speak more to that, that some of that is the photography of it. Some of it's definitely the photography, the lighting, and the contrast between the model and the background, like mm -hmm. the more you can get that to pop out. Uh -huh. uh, one thing is interesting, too, on the style of painting. So the more traditional, and Caleb could probably talk to this better than I can, but a more traditional, like, zenithal edge highlight model is yeah. really making this look more like a little tiny toy than compared to something where you're painting it volumetrically and you're adding a lot more of that light and shadow to make it look like it's a true scale thing that's mm -hmm. painted how light's actually going to interact with it. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. um, so those things, like if somebody has done that volume 
it doesn't look like a little tiny model. It actually looks like how light would actually interact with something had that if that was like yeah. life size. Um, yeah. yeah. Hey. Sorry, my dog's scratching at the door here. So. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I, Carl's I've, about to get a cat in his lap. I've been. Uh, I've been. Uh, uh, no, it's really I've been. Uh, trying to take a little bit better pictures i need to get some light over where i take the pictures because it, it, they're a little dark um where i'm taking them but bring out the ring light they at least look a little better yeah that's probably not a bad idea um they at least yeah. look a little better than oh i just snapped a picture on my desk of this thing but i'm even, using even the one you just took pictures of yeah i think it was yesterday you're like yeah, oh, yeah. you're looking at my thing on i could see the difference between Looking at it in person. Looking at it in person and looking at yeah. it. Yeah. Looks better in person. Yeah. Way better. Totally. Yeah. It it usually does. I struggle so I struggle so much with that. Um, one of the things that I find with my photography is my for whatever reason, my brights, the whites get blown up. Uh -huh. They're uh -huh. they're the, the bright areas get exaggerated and everything gets kind of kind of frozen. <laughs> <laughs> poor caleb poor caleb anyway anyway yeah yeah i mean i think um the quality should... of light you're using makes a big difference too so absolutely a non-diffuse light source like it's really going to accentuate some of those kind of like specular oh, highlights that's... and things like that that's where if you use a more point. like flat diffuse light you get a little bit less contrast light to Oh, there he is. <laughs> <laughs> Are you back, Caleb? No, he dropped. Okay. He's reconnecting, I think. Okay. Um, yeah. I, no, no. That's a really good point. I, I'm going to try to use like a diffused light source on it and see if I get a different. I bet you I get it. Yeah. Like Shell was just mentioning the ring light. Yeah. Um, so ring light, it's going to be a really nice soft light source. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and that is going to let your your painting do more what it's done naturally because the the light itself isn't doing much it's just illuminating it it's not actually like putting a harsh specular light onto it which will yeah. blow out your highlights and things like that yeah, yeah um and the light like a back a black or darker background you're obviously painting black legion mostly right now so they're all dark too so yeah uh dark background uh also remember like your dark colors absorb so much light just yeah. the way light actually physically reflects right is that those darker colors are going to absorb more and naturally you're going to have brighter highlights in a photo because those dark colors are just absorbing so much more of your light source of course of course yeah of course yeah yeah i've actually been again like i feel like the black legion colors the gold and in in silver and black are you know at its core like they're kind of basic you know they're kind of basic colors um and so they may not like on an individual basis be really impressive but i feel like once you see the army together on the table like once yeah, you had yeah. me put that thousand points down and we were like oh let's play a game i was like oh man this this really looks it's good, good. It's in, good in person. <laughs> you know and um, i think that's pretty fitting to the lore like i'm actually rereading black legion now just because you've been on such oh, a, a kick that, here yeah. Yeah. And then, like, listening to them talk about how, like, they didn't intentionally, they, like, they didn't call themselves the Black Legion. They, it's not intentionally black. It's the lack of legions, and right. everybody else is using Black Legion as more of like a taunt for them, um, which then they absolutely take ownership of. And it's yeah. it's not about the individual heraldly. It's more about the uh, the the re envision of what a legion is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I um... and I think that's actually true to that kind of the group shot versus the individual bottle standing up yeah man color. i gotta i gotta tell you like i'm really really happy with the way it's coming out and then somebody asked me how i was doing my bases and uh so here's here's a base i created for this guy right here um and it's really just the base uh the plastic base that that comes with games workshop um then what i do is i have a few rocks um like i have a bag of rocks that are like the size that i just super glue down and then um, that's these bigger rocks. First, I, I set the model on it, right? And I'm like, okay, how's where can I put where can I put the rocks that it's not interfering with how the model yeah. stands? That I, is an important dry fit. Dry yes. fit your base 
<laughs> very much. I learned that the hard way one time. Uh, yeah. So glue down the rocks. Okay, cool. You know, I, I get them down. Then um, I go, and I'm going to bring Shell into this conversation again, too. I go and I uh, put a bunch of white glue on, and I spread the white glue kind of all over it. And then I dump, I have this um, this sand that I got a long time ago from home, from home Depot. It's coarse sand. And so it has a lot of these smaller rocks and just sand in it. And it really yeah. just gives it a nice variation. Then once that's all dry and I've poured, poured it, you know, poured it all off, I spray with my airbrush a very dark brown and then a lighter brown. And then I just dry brushed a, um, a, a bone skeleton, not not the yeah. bone white, but like the off white one, whatever it is, uh, the faded bone one. And that's it. That's it. Boom. Done. I mean, I could stick like a little scrub brush on there if I wanted to, but it, it it's a nice contrast to the black and gold and red too so it, it all really ends up tying together well. and it's nice. a very fast i you know i it's it's just a very fast and effective method for for basing now the reason i'm going to pull a shell into this is because the last time i was doing this um i had poured the sand on it <clears throat> then i don't remember what i was doing i was like pouring the sand off it was still not 100 percent dry and you're like, well, what you want to do? So I'm like, I know what I'm doing. Blah, blah, you're, <laughs> and you're like, listen, if you don't want to listen to my 16 years as a teacher teaching crafts to young children <laughs> on how to, how to use white glue, and I'm like, I've got this. <laughs> like, you, you got kind of a little offended that I wouldn't listen to you. Yeah. What was it I was doing wrong? I don't remember. Okay. Yeah. That was, that was a worthy fight for us to have. <laughs> Uh, your your basing actually just uh, made me think of a question for Caleb here. Is that when okay. I'm painting my base, like you were talking about your your dark brown and your light brown, and then working up there, um, I actually leave the center darker because the model is naturally casting a shadow. So if I'm painting a model with a zenithal like top down light, I'm actually going to leave the center of the base darker, which um, just uh, is the way that na light's naturally going to fall, especially from a zenithal position. And I'm curious if uh, anybody else does that. Before before Caleb answers, <laughs> I'll tell you, I yeah. do the reverse usually. Yeah. I do brighter as like a spotlight method uh, on the model, even though it's not correct light wise. Yeah. And I learned this from Dave Paints because I saw the way he did shells like Eldar initially. Yeah. But what ends up happening is that brightness. I feel like draws your attention to the center of the model a bit, but I don't know. What does Caleb think on either of those things? You guys are amateurs. Um, <laughs> well, man, lighter, really so that's why I do it that way. <laughs> can you guys hear me? All right. Yeah. We yeah. can hear you. Cool. It's only showing like 84% upload. So I don't know if my, it's okay. It's, it's, oh. it's higher than that. Okay. Perfect. Um, a lot of it comes down to the atmosphere of yeah. what you're trying to create. I, yes. I knew he was uh, say that. <laughs> nor, normally a model is going to create uh, natural shadows, but let's take for instance. Can you guys see all those variations? So I can see one. obviously a lot of incomplete models. Move, move them. Can you move them over just a little bit? Because on our screen, it's not as wide. There you go. Perfect. Right there. Okay. Yes. All right. So, so a lot of incomplete models. Um, but what you're seeing is, is when you have a bright area in front, you're going to create what are called light vectors, right? It's going to make the eye draw up. So we're always looking down. Unfortunately, we're always looking down on our models. If you're standing on a tabletop, you're looking like this onto a model. Rarely are you seeing a model like this. Right. Yeah. Unless you squat look, down. I don't look your... down on my models at all. Right. I think my models are perfect. <laughs> <just where they're. laughs> Normally, we're looking at an angle like this. Oh, gotcha. Um, so, so what we like to do is create those values that are going to bring you up to the interest point of the model. Yeah. Um, when you create that dark area there, it's going to make the top of the model look brighter always the one of our little cheats is if you want to make something brighter put the area around of it darker 
Interesting. Okay. It, it, yeah. If you brought something up as light as you can, bring that area around it darker, it's going to create that those values. So now we got a shift in our color here. This is more of a just kind of an overall color shape. Then we look at the next model, and you see how the base is much darker than yeah. the value of the, the model itself. I'm doing the opposite here, and the reason I want to keep the the base darker than the model is because there's so much black on this model that if I put a bright <laughs> oh man man bad connection sorry everybody watching I knew live. I knew <laughs> where he was going yeah he's he's back he's back okay so if the model's dark and you put a bright saying, thing under it Right. If I were to make this really bright right here in the in the center of that base, what's going to happen is my eye is just going to look at the top of yeah. the head and go right to the base. You won't be able to focus on that model right. at all. So so keeping that yeah. that darkness down here just helps draw the eye up and creates the interest here. So now there's a variation of this, and this isn't intentional. Josh, but, your webcam utility just popped up. <clears throat> Uh huh. Oh, you can see the overspray of. <laughs> you can see, yeah, see the overspray of, the of airbrushing. Yeah. Yeah. Almost the same section of model with the really bright head, but because the color here is so similar, whereas yeah. here these are all contrasting colors. You can see the contrast there. I mean, it ties into the bone a little bit. Yeah. Um, but it's mainly contrasting colors. Now here, complementary colors, based around the darks. That little bit of green really helps center that model so that your eye can go up and focus on the, the important areas of the model. Hmm. The nice thing about this, of all of these models, is if you were to look at these from a distance, yeah, the biggest draw is going to be this model. Yeah, yeah. Because of maximized contrast. Yeah. Maximize light, maximize contrast. So there's there's a lot of tricks even to basing. Um, we play with that a lot in especially our competition models with composition is sure. um, using contrast of light, using contrast of colors. Yeah. 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 I mean the one I think the one mistake I made, and I've mentioned this before, is my tyranids have like they're supposed to be from a swamp world and so i painted them green and browns and light tans and 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 then and then i did like swamp bases which are effectively the same colors and so they really blend in it which is what they're supposed to do but in hindsight it's more later, appropriate <laughs> i look at it and i go yeah but they don't bounce off the base they don't pop at all so right it's kind of man it's is what it is at the moment so if I were going to redo Tyranids, I would do them probably significantly different than the way I did them now. But I'm not. I'm not going to redo Tyranids. In fact, I just <laughs> sold a bunch of some Tyranid stuff, and I'm trading away some stuff to uh, to uh, Bryce for a couple more obliterators. So. All right. Well, gentlemen, we're at that time. We have reach the two hour mark um i appreciate you guys working through the technical issues we had this is the first time we've had the technical issues i think it's partially you're you're off in the snowstorm caleb <laughs> yeah this is supposed to be a really good internet connection too and it's not working very well tonight i wonder if it's i wonder if it's your connection or if it's just the weather front product we're using or yeah the weather who knows but i super appreciate you joining us caleb and, yeah, and thank you for the <laughs> thank you for the quick and dirty um approach to how i should start my sisters i'm glad we recorded that <laughs> so i could go back <laughs> thank you guys for having me on inviting me on oh anytime anytime man and i again i think we should get adam to come on we can get cat on we can get um get dan and campbell on at some point yeah. that'd be fun it's a great time to hobby with friends get different insights and perspectives yeah. te Listen, techniques <laughs> what did, what did you accomplish here josh let's talk about how far we got yeah uh i actually made really it, it doesn't look like it because the models are so tiny <laughs> and but <blurry>. uh 
Yeah, hang on. Oh, there you I'll go. Get, let me yeah, find sometimes my that camera focus. here. There we oh, go. Oh, there you go. This way. Yeah. Um, so I got all the black doors done, the white accents, silver treads. Yeah. Uh, actually, a lot of little details. Uh, and this is looking super flat in this light with this camera, but these are actually not, not going to take a whole lot to to get across the finish line for me. And then you're going to do oil wash on those, right? Do, yeah, Last get step. oil wash at the end. Uh, I need to yeah, do, do a little bit more black and then do some highlights on there. And then I'll do the oil wash and uh, our decals and oil wash. So, right on. Yeah. Well, Definitely listen, making got... good progress and looking like I'll be ready for Adepticon. Except for a few missing spots as I keep looking at this thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh i got most of the first gold trim base down uh, nice and and dirty i gotta do a purple wash on it and then highlights of gold and silver but uh overall off to a good start um again not a huge fan of uh organic to mechanical but there's not a lot of organic on this thing this thing is much more mechanical i know are you and um <laughs> And then the tentacles are fairly easy to do. I did just do a model very similar with the warp smith uh, that came out quite well. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, you know, get away with a lot of uh, uh, silvers uh, of varying colors and then and then washes. And uh, the other thing I want to do is, if you notice, this guy has this flag here uh, on this pole. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be the first time I try to put a decal on an uneven surface. Oh, over, microsoul, oh, microsoul for the win. It'll, it'll it'll do it right over this flag, and I think that'll look sick. So that's my plan. That's my plan for this guy here. Um, as soon as I finish him up, he's the next model I'm working on. I just see, see another area where I miss gold. Damn it! <laughs> um, <laughs> as soon as I finish this guy up, though, it's on to uh, two. Um, not forge fiends one forge fiend and two uh uh mauler fiends maulers yeah and then and then i've got it i've oh oh and and damn and two uh <laughs> obliterators two obliterators and then that that part of the force is ready to go so that's a whole other list that's like all demon engines it's probably terrible it's probably terrible in combat is that a but, full second 2000 point <clears throat> list of just demon engines yes but it utilizes some of the models from the previous previous list. So like I pull in two obliterators and I still have two squads of chaos space Marines in there. So, okay, sure. But other than that, it's all demon engines and different HQs. And I've also got enough that I don't have to run the Abaddon with the force. Cause I've got a sorcerer and a demon prince. I painted up that demon prince. So I'm just, yeah. I'm just rocking through stuff, which is kind of yeah, nice. Are. It's kind of nice. a good year. I got to clear up space for the sisters sisters That's about right it. got a whole bunch of them to paint with a bunch of tanks too and a future hobby progress challenge dropping at some point yeah TBD. i think i think april mid-april may is when we kick it off so if you're listening and you listen to this and you want to participate in that start thinking about what you want to accomplish now the the cool thing about that was you won't necessarily have to all do one army let's say you're halfway through painting an army now and you're like but but carl josh i've I'm going to be done in three months with this army. I've only got three units left to do. Cool. You do those three units and then you either add to that army or maybe you want to paint a war band for, for war cry, or you want to paint an age of Sigmar army, or you want to paint a blood bowl team. Cool. That's what you're going to paint the next, you know, the next uh, month. It's, it's just a constant war on getting rid of your, your gray plastic. So it'll be the war on gray plastic too. Yeah. And then we got right to return to our. I'm going to. What are you going to oh, do, Caleb? Sorry. No. I, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this escalation league. So here's the, here's kind of my test model. Um, yeah. I, I think I posted a picture of it up. But um, yeah, this is going to be the escalation league. So I'd like to kind of progress on this escalation league with that hobby challenge and just. Yeah, you can double dip. There, everybody. You can double dip. Yeah, and there's double there's usually that. other shows or people that are doing stuff like this, and we encourage you like double dip on that stuff, yeah. man. You know why not? It all it all counts. It's all <clears throat> it all counts. It all counts. What? Tell me a little bit about the Escalation League you're doing. Um, it's it's an Escalation League with with the staff from the Army Painter. There's about eight or nine of us nice. that are doing it. Of course, there's some 
tremendous painters in there. Thomas, um, Stefan, the studio painters for Army Painter. You guys have probably seen all their stuff. Um, yep. Adam, uh, Bo, all those guys. Um, so we're building Escalation League. Um, I'm going to have to learn. I have yet to play a game of 10th. Uh, well, so I'm going to have to learn how to play because. Uh, I know snow prevented you from coming down here to play board games with us the other day. The cat made it down. But um, but uh, if you want to come down, we can play a game of 10th, man. Yeah, I'm going to have to learn it because I got to play. We're going to have like a little mini turn. Yep. Nice. Yeah, you better uh, figure that out soon, my friend. So, all right. Well, with that, I think we should sign off, Josh. I just I'm going to sit here and find missing gold on all this thing for, <laughs> for the next hour. But uh, side tread that'll wrap up with about two more paint strokes here. Nice. So I well, think that's a good you. time to call it a day. Thank you all for um, joining we'll, us. Um... <laughs> Poor Caleb. <laughs> Poor Caleb. 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 Yeah. We love Sorry. you, man. No, don't be. <laughs> it's not it's not your fault. We we love you, man. Thank you so much for, for joining us. We super appreciate it. We will have you back again. Oh, there's more gold I'm missing. Uh we, we, <laughs> we will have you have you back again in the uh in the uh very near future. And maybe we do something like this in person. That would be super fun too. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Oh, we we will plan that. Yeah, we will plan yeah. right on. All right, but I think we're we'll talking. Cat talk was Cat was mentioned in a class with you guys, so maybe yeah. we can figure. Yeah, we can out. we can do that again too. We can do that again too. Yeah. All right. Do some live painting online. That'd be fun. All right, all right, buddy. Take care. All right. Well, thank you guys. Oh, there's another missing gold. <laughs> <laughs> all right, go ahead. All right. And st put stop us out. Until next time. Thank you all for joining us. We really appreciate it. And are we done?